This lesson deals with the properties of the capacitor. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 6, starting on page 9. Early in the chapter, we talked about the idealized concept of capacitance. There is a physical device that approximates this, and it's called the capacitor. So just like the resistor and the resistance, the OR ending is indicative of the real or physical device. Now, what is a capacitor? It consists of two metal plates separated by an insulator. An insulator is a very high resistive material. So again, you can see why the current passing through here with a DC voltage would eventually be very, very small. Capacitance depends on two things. The amount of area you have of the metal plates that are here, and the larger that area is, the more capacitance you have, and also the distance between the plates. The closer the plates are, the higher the capacitance. So the relationship for capacitance in area and distance is that it's proportional to area and inversely proportional to distance. And epsilon is the factor that would make those units line up. If you look online or in catalogs, you see that there are many different types of capacitors. Some are called ceramic disks. Others are called polyester film. Some are called electrolytic or polarized capacitors. Most capacitors have numbers stamped on them, but occasionally they'll have um, dots painted on them, and the dots would correspond to the colors of our color code. But just like the color code, we're going to have four digits or colors, and those are indicative of the value. And so the value of capacitance is going to be the first digit, the second digit, and then times 10 to the third digit. But the base unit here is picofarads. And then the last digit is, or color, would be the tolerance. If it's the letter M, it's 20%, K, it's 10%, J is 5%, G is 2%, and F is 1%. Let's look at an example. Suppose they had a capacitor with 203K stamped on it. I guess that'd be 20 times 10 to the 3 picofarads. There's actually 20 nanofarads, or 0 0.02 microfarads. And the K is indicative of 10% tolerance. In other words, it's somewhere between plus or minus 10% of this value. I normally put things in injury notation, but when you buy capacitors, they typically are listed in picofarads or in microfarads. Some older catalogs or older capacitors, you might find that not listed as pico, but as micro micro. That was changed probably somewhere in the 1960s to pico. Now, depending on the dielectric, there's a range of capacitance that you can achieve. So dielectrics like glass, mica, paper, plastic, ceramic, and, and electrolytic. The electrolytic capacitor, there are two different types, an aluminum oxide and a solid tantalum. The range of capacitance that you can achieve with these different dielectrics are kind of listed here. Not as absolute, but give you a rough idea that depending on the size of the capacitance you want, maybe limited to the type of dielectric you have to pick. Also, the tolerances that are available for these types of capacitors. And then lastly, a thing called the maximum working voltage. The capacitor doesn't dissipate any power, and so we don't have to worry about it heating up, but it does have a limit with respect to the dielectric. Put a large enough voltage across it, you can eventually break down the material. You can see here for glass, you can go quite high in value, then dropping down for paper or dielectric. The electrolytic capacitor has an oxide coating that is how it creates the relatively high values of capacitance per unit volume. But there is one problem with the oxide, it's polarity sensitive. What that means is that for these types of capacitors, you can put voltage across the capacitor from one terminal to another or flip it and it won't cause any problems. But for these capacitors, polarity is very important. In fact, they usually have a polarity sign marked on them. Go back to this previous page. We have a plus sign or a minus sign marked. The other one's obviously implied. And for these capacitors, you have to make sure that the voltage is always positive between here and here. Now, what happens if you don't do that? Well, if you put it the other way, if you put a voltage from here to here, in other words, positive here and here, say what will happen is the oxide will become a dead short. So instead of the capacitor being an open circuit in steady state, it's going to be a short circuit. And that can draw a lot of current and eventually boil the electrolyte and the oxides, and it can explode. Now, if you, if you apply a voltage in this polarity, there's a similar problem in the sense that if you exceed the voltage rating of this capacitor, it can also explode. We can model a, a real capacitor using an ideal capacitance at parallel resistance. This model is good for the kind of work we're going to be doing for DC or low frequencies. We'll talk about other models in other courses as the need arises. The dielectric that's used here is some material, and every material has some resistance. But typically this is in the megaohm range. 
for DC, when we say a capacitor looks like an open circuit in steady state, we'll eventually have some resistance between the terminals. It'll actually be helpful and it can actually discharge the capacitor's uh, stored energy so that we won't get hurt. The insulation resistance for a given dielectric varies with the value of capacitance. The product of the capacitance and the insulation resistance is roughly constant for the dielectric. So as you change the capacitance value, the value of the parallel resistance also changes. At 25 degrees C, an aluminum electrolytic capacitor would have a R sub P C product of around 500 ohm farads, whereas ceramic mica and glass would have about 10,000 ohm farads, and a plastic dielectric would have something like 100,000 ohm farads. Well, we could take a physical capacitor and model it with an ideal resistance and an ideal capacitance. I'll do a couple examples here. Suppose they have a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. Now using the value here of 500 ohm farads, dividing that by C, we then get the value of the resistance. In this case, it's 50 million ohms. Take a mica capacitor, 20,000 picofarads. That would also be 20 nanofarads. Using the value of 10,000 ohm farads, and dividing that by the 20 nanofarads, you get 500 giga ohms. And then lastly, for a plastic dielectric of 20,000 picofarads, 20 nanofarads, and then taking the value here of 100,000 divided by the capacitance value, we'd have a factor of 10 more than last time, so 5 tera ohms. And so very large resistances, but finite values. And these are some of the properties of the real device, which we call the capacitor.